Good morning. It's October 1st and we have just really starting to feel fall here. I don't know if you can see this snow right at the top of Big Mountain. This is Whitefish Lake. This is a ski town so it's starting to get a little chilly. Got my fall. You can't really see all the fall colors out here but behind me they are phenomenal. Okay so I'm going to do something similar to what I've done before and very different which is I'm gonna dive really deep into what's the real reason for all of these solar flares as far, you know, according to what I could put together, right? Because <laughs> it's always gonna be about my perspective because that's what I'm bringing to you. And um, resourcing with other people who have similar um, perspectives and sort of normalizing it. So taking really big concepts and bringing them down into what does it take to be a human in human form when there's solar flares going on, right? So, you know, I focused on solar flares and geomagnetic storms and solar storms. And each of these are different because flares are when the sunspots start to emit. Um, geomagnetic storms are when the, the magnetism, the electronic, electric, uh, electricity, electric pulses of the earth are in response. And solar winds are, you know, hey, I spent two three days in a campground where the wind just kept blowing enough that it was hard to even light a stove. So when those winds come in, man, it's hard to have, you know, any kind of normalcy. And, and we have these invisible energetic wind, winds going on that are sort of flopping us around, right? So um, I have a lot of new um, subscribers and I want to put in perspective the path that I, that how I built this. So I started coaching parents who had young adults and teens in therapeutic programs from the psychological perspective, mostly with creatives. You know, those little beautiful um, beings who just didn't do well in school, ADHD, um, rebellion, um, oppositional defiant, and then sort of grew with the industry as it went through as a coach and working with clinical teams to teach them what I was learning, right? So I went from psychology to high sensitivity, the HSP work. And then once you enter the HSP work, it seems like you're dealing with sensitives who are reacting to invisible and visible things. So then we have to sort of specialize in what are those invisible things that our children, ourselves, our bodies are reacting to. So then there's this really deep dive. And for those of you who followed my videos, it's kind of like, um, well, wait a minute. If there's action and reaction to sensitivity, something's going on in the house, in the room, in the smells, in the lights, and I'm responding to that, how does it impact you what are the reasons for that impact and how do we start tracking where it's coming from so that we know what to do and how what tools can we use so you know think of it like a spider who's building this web of all sorts of connections between between uh, what's going on in school what's going on in the family system what's going on in energetically on our planet what's going on energetically within our body and looking and tracking cause and effect. So I'm a really good spider who has webs all over the place connecting information. So I have these intuitive intelligences and I have the courage, as you've noticed, to talk about things that a lot of people aren't talking about. So let's go through. Yesterday, we had four um, storms. Um, it started at 10.30, 10.35 in um, mountain time. It was an M1, so it's an M class. Then it goes to an M2 at 7.30, and then it goes to an M1.6 at 7.45, um, and then a C class, a really high C class, at 9.24. And you can go to Pam Youngins on Facebook and look at these and track it through space weather. So these things came in and just pummeled us and rocked us around yesterday. And what I'm noticing is that we have a conscious ability to pay attention to that and an unconscious reaction as we're addressing what's going on energetically in my body, right? And so what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna hand it right over to you and say we as sentient beings are being lit up. Our energy system is being lit with energetic fire, electricity, we're coming out of dormancy and we're starting to blossom into something that a holder of light, right? 
a holder of light, our water bodies are turning into light bodies. And we're learning how to explore this. So this is a brand new frontier. You know, we kind of thought it was really fun to look at the, at the movement from Europe over to the Americas or from the Americas um, across to the West. Let's look at the new frontiers, the space programs that we have watched growing up in the 60s. And let's look at what is the new frontier. This is it. This is it, the energetic understanding. So um, I was reading Antonio Ario, who is on Facebook, and he's talking about the diamond energy, the diamond order within the um, old um, historical context, right? Which is that diamonds are perfection. They are the purest form. They are reflectors of light. They are not perfect. No diamond is perfect, but they have flaws that, that enhance the light or continue to bring the light, right? And what I put together with Antonio's writing is that we're being asked to go to, back to our diamond form, our absolute perfect light bearing form that is our original blueprint. And, and use that term, research it, go look at what is original blueprint, right? We're returning us to, and we're removing things like layers in contaminants and distortions and, you know, destructions that have happened to our systems, to our bodies, to our ability to shine light. So we're in this alchemical process of restoring our organic energetic blueprint. So when you go to sound bowls, when you go to light um, chanting, when you go to Tibet, when you go to places where they're aware of the light body and they work with it, this is what we have been trying to do as humans for thousands of years. What we're doing now is it's happening consciously, unconsciously, organically to our bodies, right? So let's put this in context with the books that I'm writing, which is that I wrote The Indigo Assignment, which is about those sort of brave front row or um, what front, front line warriors who came in to destroy and dismantle the systems and the institutions that kept us locked into a certain pattern so that we couldn't see the light, we couldn't be the light, right? And then we have crystals. Um, the crystal assignment is the next book, right? Which is those that held the crystalline energy within them and they hold or they plant into the grids into the grids that hold our earth, a vibration, and they're removing conditioning, right? Next come the rainbows who are about opening it up and spreading and saying, hey, get out of these roles, get out of these identifications, stop limiting yourself by what you um, think you need to be and start exploring what a new human is with freedom. And then we get to the diamonds, which is the what? age of Aquarius, the light body in, um, in its full um, opening and awareness. So we take this individual awareness and we've been growing it since the early um, mid 70s, right? And we take it into our own self-knowledge, into parenting, into grandparenting, into mentoring, and we create a new frontier, which is what we're doing. So it's a new frontier that's vibrational and it's light-based. It has new languages, new directions for us to learn. Um, it's important to understand energy, to track it, to play with it, to partner with it, to transform it. And what I love about Alan Seal's work in Transformational Presence is he says energy can be transformed from one form to the other with exercises in consciousness. So let's start learning how to transform energy and direct it. So when we focus on all this energetic um, energetic growth and budding, it makes it much more uh, interesting, but it's big. It's really, really big stuff. It's so big that it sort of isn't mainstream. It isn't what we're used to talking about. And, and, and what we want to do is bring it all, what we want to do is bring it all in and go, well, like, yeah, sure, that might be going on, but what do we do about that? So that's where I come in. I'm like this grounded, physical aware coach who also has the main part of my body in the esoterics. And so I'm translating and I'm giving you physical tools that work and ideas of what you can do with children who are tapped in and turned on and lit up and doing things that normal children don't or are you, our children we're used to calling normal are not doing, right? And so school and, and family systems and everything are rocking around. That's what I know how to do. 
is bring it in and give you solid tools. So I've got six tools for you today I want to, to go through. Um, the first is focus on embodiment. Be in your body, pay attention to your body, eat, drink, sleep, play, feed it well, rest it well, be in it consciously. So you could go into mountain pose, right? And you can ground into the earth and you can bend your knees a little bit and you can say, I'm completely here. And if you want to attach to the earth, ground into the earth, um, ask Gaia to come help you. We've done this before in other grounding exercises in previous videos. Ground in and embody, be in your body because that's when the light starts to shine, right? Number two, embrace and open up your energy reading skills. Now this is a skill that I bring up several times in my previous videos. What I want you to really focus on is your clairs, your sensitivities, and then validate them. Oh, I just noticed this. I just felt this. I can see this pattern happening, even though there are people who don't. Um, I know and I feel. So what we're doing is we're taking those energy skills and saying, and we're embodying them and saying, yeah, I saw that. I feel that. I know that. Kind of like standing up here and talking about this with an audience that sort of can believe it or not believe it, right? <laughs> Number three, since you're unlayering, unlayering and removing, don't make it harder on yourself. We're trying to dismantle and take off um, generations, lineage of pain and, and struggles and problems. Don't make it harder. Look at your alcohol use. Look at your drug use. Look at the way that you self-medicate with sugar or crap or sleep. Look at how you avoid or hide um, the patterns in you and those around you. Learn how to nurture all of this out with kindness. Make it easier for the light to, to the to original blueprint to come to light. Don't make it harder. Number four, lead. Lead, lead, lead to your children, your grandchildren, um, the people around you, your peers can, it, it can, can feel you energetically and then let them see you, let them let, be present in your body so that, you know, you, they can lean in and go, what are you doing? Like, you're not, you're sort of unperturbed by all of this. I've got someone walking by, so it's got a little distracting. So, you know, and notice who steps in and leans in and who steps back. It's okay. Number five. Love yourself through this process because you're blooming. Imagine that you've been a seed and your entire life you thought that this seed underground was your world. And all of a sudden between heat and the time of year, it's kind of like you're starting to grow within and burst open. And you're like, no, 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 no. That's not anything I know what to do in this lifetime. And you're like, yeah, but this is what we're doing. So this is why you're watching this video because we are blooming back into our original blueprint. And number six, the last one, always is to have compassion. Man, you know, doing this all, paying attention to being in body, consciously watching your um, yourself, uh, what do I want to say, medicating processes is really hard, especially when you're working, when you're parenting, when you're in a relationship, when you're managing your fears, your the money issues, the news coming up, the future shutdowns, all of it, it gets really hard. So here is a vid a card that I wanted to show you. This is what it looks like when you're embodied. I love this. And this is what it looks like when you are bursting open to your original blueprint. So if this is something you're interested in learning more about, this is what I can help you out with. Um, we can do individual sessions. We can do packages. Just head over to denisedryden.com and check it out and uh, drop me a note. Put some comments in here. See what it feels like. Do your own research. And um, by all means, let's start this um, conversation. You take care. Bye-bye.